Yeah, I'll start over. Sorry. Oh, did you do it already? Mm hmm. No, I was working off the camera. Not even turn my alarm clock off. I understand. Alright, that's all. Yeah. Yeah, we be trying to do this.
and okay, I'm gonna pull it up, and then if you can answer me. We're going to ask if you have any questions that you want answered about life insurance policies that um, we don't cover now. I mean, feel free to call, text, inbox, comments, email, something, and let us know what your questions are. Um, and then, of course, at any point, you can reach out to Miss Marion. Um, we'll tag her in the comments. She is tagged in the event, though, as a host. Um, to get any any type of life insurance, but we can we can jump right on in whenever y'all ready. So y'all want me to just start answering them, or y'all gonna ask me questions? What do you uh, want? To, what do you want to yeah, do? I mean, okay. Well, the first question was, who needs life insurance? Okay. So hey, everybody. Again, my name is Marion O'Para, and I am an Arkansas licensed life insurance agent. Okay, so she said who needs life insurance? And anyone that is living needs life insurance. Ooh, amen. You especially need life insurance if you have children. Okay, so um, uh, let me just go over there again. Whoever need, Who needs life insurance? Everyone that is living needs life insurance. Okay, next question. What is life insurance used for and what does it cover? Okay, so life insurance is used to protect families in the event of an untimely death. Um, I'm going to try to kind of sound like... Just talk to us. Okay. You don't need to well, I mean, I just because I know it's a tough subject for it some is. people, yes. but it, it's, yes, yes, yes. it's not really a tough subject for me. I've dealt with me it a lot. Me either. I've dealt with death, so it doesn't yeah, yeah, bother yeah. me. It doesn't bother me at all. So, um, what life insurance cover is actually the burial, the services, and also, it's the first and quickest way to start an estate for your family. So when I say estate, that means setting up um, a plan for your children or your spouse or anybody to have in case you leave this earth it's too soon. So it's going to cover, you. when you get in life insurance, you want to make sure that it's going to cover your mortgage, um, everyday expenses, so you want to include your income when you're trying to figure out the amount of insurance that you need, life insurance that you need. Um, if you leave here before your children go off to college, you want to make sure that it includes enough money to where they'll have a college fund. Um, and the way you do that is you take your income, your monthly income, and times it by 10, basically. If you want their income and their lifestyle to go up, you make your income go up. If you want it to stay the same, then you basically just keep it the same. So that's what life insurance covers. Um, the only thing that, if you leave this earth in an untimely manner, that will still be on you would be your mortgage and your car note. Um, anything like bills or credit card bills. I'm a double check student loan. Student, yes, you have to. I, look, I was writing down my. I started writing my. No, will. actually, student loans die with you. you. Really? really? Student loans die with you. Oh, the so you only thing die first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The only way to, to get rid of, to get rid of the of money. Money. Yeah. So the only okay. thing that doesn't die with you is a mortgage and a car loan. Okay. Which I mean, they can turn the car in and then right. you know, but okay. Yeah, it doesn't die. Okay. With you. Okay. Your mortgage does. It don't die with you either. So so let's okay. either pay it or give up the house. Correct. Okay. Or give up the car. Right. Okay. okay. Student loans do die with you. What? Okay. Mm -hmm. I do have a question. From an experience, I know they will try and get you to pay it everything because my to. grandmother passed, and they're like, well, Who's handling the state? She has these credit cards, and then I was making out my wheel and was like, Pay off your student loans. I'm like, Hold up, my student loans will take my whole policy. Okay, I'm glad you said that. No. Okay, so you don't have to thank you. Yeah, that of they course, course anybody <laughs> is going to try to get their money, but mm -hmm. yeah. also mm -hmm. With the life insurance policy, the way it's set up is you have a policy owner, you have the insured, and you have the beneficiary. The okay. policy owner and the insured can be the same people, but they don't have to be the same people. The beneficiary, of course, is not the insured, but the beneficiary could be the policy owner. Okay? okay. So, in the event of the untimely death for the insured, that is who, the insured is the person who the policy pays for when they die, okay? 
the money goes to the beneficiary. Okay. The insured or the policy owner debt cannot be taken from that beneficiary. Okay. Now, if that beneficiary in you know gets that money and they're over the age of eighteen and maybe they have a creditor, then they could try to claim that money. But oh wow, okay, so not from the insured or the policy. Oh, from, from the beneficiary. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Give me an example of that. I I, I got lost. Okay. I got so lost. I I'm glad we have people sitting here. So. <laughs> I'm Marion, and I'm the policy owner, and Kenyatta. Uh, Kenyatta is my daughter, and I'm getting Hello. insurance on Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. Okay. I named the beneficiary Kenyatta's daughter, Shanika. Okay. So, she, in the event that my daughter, Kenyatta, dies, mm -hmm. Shanika is going to receive the policy face value, okay. however much, the $100,000, we're just going to say that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I owe money for credit cards. They cannot go to Shanika and say, you just received the money from your mom passing and your grandmother was the policy owner and she owes us money. Mm. We're taking it out of that money. They can't do that. Okay. Kenyatta also owed on, even if you own your house, mm -hmm. like she owned on her house. She still owned a mortgage and her daughter doesn't want to pay that mortgage. She just wants the bank to come get the car. I mean, come get the house. She, they can't take her money. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. I have a real crazy question. Okay. <laughs> so let's say someone dies, and I know child support is another thing to catch everything. Will they come out of a policy? I'm just curious. Who is the beneficiary? Let's say if, um, I don't know, maybe a, a father is the beneficiary. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. So if just you wondering. have a policy mm -hmm. on yourself mm -hmm. and you name your ex husband mm -hmm. as the beneficiary, why would they? Because now he has the children. Okay. Oh. Okay. I mean, if he has other children. Other children? Still, like if his other baby mom. Other baby mom, like, oh, she died. I know she got some money. Or, I if, was just or, if, or if the husband or spouse know. is the insured. But he still owes back child support. I'm just, just curious. So just that's curious. very, very simple. Okay. The person who dies, mm -hmm. none of their debt, none of their issues or can down. touch yes. that money. Okay. But that's also why it's very important to when you do get a life insurance policy, mm -hmm. you do also get a will because the will is going to speak for you. Mm -hmm. You want to get a living will as well. The, li the will is going to speak for you when you no longer can. Okay. It's going to tell your insurance policy exactly what to do. Okay. And how is it different from a living will? Or is it the, same? the living will is if you're incapacitated, like maybe you're on life support, mm -hmm. it's going to speak for you. It's going to say, leave me on life support for this amount of time. Take me off of life support. Mm -hmm. Don't do right. this. Don't do that. Too. So, mm -hmm. okay. And I found a free document. I got emotional. I didn't finish it, but I'll post it in the link. I uh, downloaded a free living will to fill out and have signed and notarized. But I got my feelings. I can also. So I couldn't thing. finish it. Okay. Okay. So I did start, but I got my feelings. What's okay. The next question? Um. Round three. Okay, how do I know what kind of insurance I need, whole or term? Okay, so this is a good question, and a lot of people, because I am new to selling insurance, a lot of people don't quite understand term life insurance. I sell term life insurance, so I'm just going to give you the facts. I don't want to be biased and just describe both. So with term life insurance, it's very simple. It's called term life insurance because it's pure insurance. It's only insurance on your life so when you pass or if you pass a check is going to arrive in the mail for your beneficiary or it's going to be brought to your beneficiary there's no savings in it there's no investments in it none of that it's just strictly for insurance on the person's life okay it's going to be cheaper than any other insurance you're going to be able to get a great amount like you can get a million dollar life policy and depending on your age and your health and all of that, it won't be as much as um, some other type of insurance. So that's term life insurance. And it's called term because it's only for a specific period of time. It can be for as short as 10 years or it can be as long as 35 years, okay? At the end of that term, you have the option to renew it and extend the term or you have the option to convert it into um, a whole life. 
So that's term insurance in a nutshell. And I know a lot of people are like, well, what if I outlive the term? We teach you why you are paying your term, you also invest money. So at the end of that term, you will no longer need insurance because you now have enough money saved up and invested to where you can pay for your own funeral, your children, you already have it set up for your children to inherit something because you have been investing the difference. And when we say invest the difference, we mean invest the difference of amount that you would have been paying for whole life insurance. You invest it yourself. Now, whole life insurance is completely different. Um, it's a lot of different kinds. You may have universal, there's some other type, adjustables, but basically whole life insurance is permanent life insurance. You pay for, for it from the time that you get it until the time that you die. It's, it costs way more because a portion of it is paying for your life insurance, which is a term policy. And then another portion is being invested into the stock market. And supposedly you have a savings plan where you can borrow your own money and pay interest on the, your own money that you've been paying them. So they're investing your money and they're probably getting a return rate. I may lose some of you all, but they're getting a return rate of probably about 12%. They're only putting into your savings account at best 4%. So I'm going to let that sink in. Okay? So if you have a $100,000 whole life policy, right? And you build your cash value up to also $100,000. When you die, your family will only get $100,000. Mm -hmm. And they will keep $100,000 of your money. So... I don't want to say I'm biased, but you can invest your own money and do what you want to with it. Of course, if you die, you won't be able to keep it, but your children will be able to keep it. Or whoever you list. It. Or whoever you list or tell the money what to do. But the company won't be keeping your money. Okay. See, I have term and then I'm investing my own. I, like I mean, it sounds like they're essentially the same thing. It's just that home, the home, home is more expensive and you yeah, don't you have as live. much financial right. freedom. Right. Okay. okay. Well, oh, was there some? It's not the same though. Because <laughs> if you invest your own money, you get 12% interest return. You mm -hmm. can. But Still. they're investing your money, getting 12% and only giving you four. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I <laughs> is there a such thing as having too much life insurance coverage? Mm. That's what it's hard to get. That was the question. It depends on how you look at it. Um, too much life insurance. It's America, so I don't see how you can yeah, have right. too much life insurance. <laughs> the more the better. No, the more the better. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. Like, <laughs> like, I agree with that. The more the better. If you can't afford it, then that's being that's too much life yeah, insurance. Exactly. If you can't afford the premium. Right. And it's more the um actual policy is more than what you need to take care of your children or anything like that when you pass away. So then that's when I would say that it's too much insurance if you can't afford it. But if you can afford it, a million dollars, that's it, you can't have too much life insurance. Okay. Unless you can't afford the premium. Yeah. You just bring it down so you can afford the premium and keep insurance. Right, so you can live before you die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can I have multiple policies with multiple companies? You can have multiple policies with multiple companies. Um, the only time that they'll look into that is maybe different type of policies because there are some that people use just to like go around tax laws and so they're using it as an investment and not a life insurance oh. okay because you you can't you have fixed different type of life insurance policies other than just term and whole life you have fixed um index type of life insurance policies and that's a whole lot to do with um to do with investments so if they see that you're investing using it more so as an investment plan to get around the taxes and stuff like that mm -hmm. with regular investments, then that could be an issue. 
but you can have as many life insurance policies as you want. Okay, can anyone else take out life insurance take out a life insurance policy me with or without my knowledge? They definitely can. Um, hmm. see. In order to get life insurance on someone, you have to have an insured interest. And what that means is if that person dies, there's going to be a financial buy, a bond on me. Mm. Or could possibly be a financial bond on me. So if you want to get a life insurance policy on your husband, ex-husband, mm. mm. or if you want to get it on your children's fathers, you don't have to have their permission. Mm. You just get it. Okay. All I need is your social class. Because they <laughs> are, they're the fathers you know. of your children. And if they die, then you now have to take care of your children alone. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a question. Can you take a, a life insurance policy out on someone that's not dead? What? Like, like that's you, what it is. For. Yeah, they gotta be alive. They <laughs> have to be alive. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's his baby oh God. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Also, grandparents can take out life insurance policies on I didn't know that. children or grandchildren. Life insurance policies. Grandchildren. They have an insured interest. It can go to extended family. Um, you just have to prove that, like, if it's extended family, like maybe a niece, I think it may require some type of consent. But if it's um, your children's father or anybody that would put a financial bond on you if they die, then, yeah, you can put a policy on them. You don't need that okay, uh, another question. Mm -hmm. Now, if even if you know one of the shareholders named the other person that's a beneficiary, can, do, does it go to them or does it is it gonna be split between the like the baby mama or the baby daddy in case of it one of the parents died? The, the beneficiary. Mom. Are you saying a minor? Yeah. Okay, that's a good I think, question. I think that one that's one of the questions. Yeah. You jumping ahead on our list. So hey, I put my question. <laughs> you didn't answer whenever you want. I skip it when we get to it. Okay, so it's really not a good idea to name a minor as your beneficiary unless you have a trust set up or a will set up, naming the guardian of your choice. But at the end of the day, when you give it to a minor, you still run that risk of once you pass somebody challenging that mm -hmm. and the court appointing a guardian for that minor so it's always good to if you have already decided if something happens to you you speak to that person and say i want you to take my children and you have their consent and they agree you put that in your will you name them as your beneficiary okay so that the check will go to them but in your will you can stipulate how they use that money use that money but it's never a good idea to name a minor anyone under the age of 18 as the beneficiary i know a lot of single mothers do have do name their children as their beneficiary it's a good idea if you have one child that's going to be 18 before the other ones to name that child that's going to be 18 or is already 18 because you never know when you, you never know the time of the day right but it's best practice to name an adult someone that is 18 or older as your beneficiary just so that you're controlling it as much as you can because the courts can override your will if you didn't name them as the beneficiary it has to go through probate court a will has to go through probate court just so you know that before and, or after it's finalized like before or after yeah, your death after, 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 after you die okay so i write it get it notarized all that stuff it's it's legal legally binding whatever but when i die it still has to go through pro, probate okay so and it can so, be challenged. so back it can be challenged mm -hmm. a will can be challenged a trust cannot okay okay so probate court if there's anybody that don't know and hasn't ever had i've had to deal with a lot of death in my years my mom is always was she's gone now but she was like the person that planned everything in my mm -hmm. family so I was always around her planning funerals and stuff What's like that. Mama? So <laughs> I, it don't really bother me and I have a lot of knowledge about that. So probate court is basically when someone dies and they have assets that's anything of value you have to put it in a newspaper you have to publish it that this person died they had these assets and give any other relative or anyone time to stake a claim on that. 
So that's what I say about we'll still have to go through probate court. No one may challenge it, but you never know once you're gone who's going to pop up, baby daddies, kids, you know about? <laughs> all of that. <laughs> So, they might be a Meet the Brown movie. Yeah. Good yeah. question. So, that's why it's not smart to um, name um, a minor as okay. the beneficiary. So, with, with that right there, what you just said. Okay, so, in my, in my first marriage to my youngest son's dad, mm -hmm. with our divorce, I was granted sole custody. Correct. So, on my life insurance policies that I have through work, and I think that was one of the questions on there too, but uh, one of my life insurance policies that I have through work, of course, my kids um, are beneficiaries, but I have like both my boys 25%, my mama 50%. That's how my mama told me to set money. But um, my thing was, my biggest fear in real life is that I pass before my boys are of age. Mm -hmm. And his father or his father's family coming back and trying to either take him or and or the money that's attached to him very costly. even though i have sole custody yeah. you no longer have it no yeah. and then he's next to you know because i've been there too it's next to ken the daddy is next to ken he definitely is so, so it was he still, couldn't, couldn't even go to like a grandma on if the, on if, the, if the dad is not, not fit or he doesn't want the child yet, then his mama is. But he still has the right. He still has the right. I've been down that road. Yes. Y'all was married, but so it don't matter if you married anyway. It's, the, yeah, it's, it's your child. Right. It's your child. Married when you marry is assumed. It is your child. Whatever. I'm just telling you, because I've been through this so many times. It is gonna work out in my life. Okay, so just to answer that question, it's assumed, baby. So that's why you don't do that. So just to answer her question, if you pass and you are not with your um the children's father, even if you were granted sole custody during a divorce or during child um courts or anything like that. Once you die, you no longer have soul custody. It's impossible. So, therefore, the ch children's father now do have the option to petition the court to be guard guardian and have soul custody. So does the grandparents. Even if he doesn't, his parents can. Mm -hmm. So that's why you need a will and it's best practice to make your beneficiaries you can make them contingent to um, make your beneficiary of age, which is 18. It's 18, y'all. And so, just to back up, benef you have a beneficiary and you have a contingent beneficiary. You can have two, three, four, five, six, seven, however many beneficiaries you want, you just split it percentage-wise of your policy. So, if you have four, you can do everybody get 25% or however you want to divide that number, that 100% in. Um, contingent beneficiary is in the event that your beneficiary dies before you do or before the insured do, then the contingent would be next in line. If the insured dies and the beneficiary is still living and the contingent, benefic contingent beneficiary is still living, the proceeds from that life insurance policy only goes to the first beneficiary or beneficiaries. Okay. The only way that the contingent beneficiary receives funds is if the beneficiary passes before the insured. Gotcha. So if I listed my mama as my beneficiary and my kids as my contingent, if Lord forbid, if mama go before then it goes I to the boys. Then when I go, it goes to my boys. Correct. Okay. Is that a change? Well, of course, you would have to make that change if they go before mm -hmm. you. You would want to make that change. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Also, there is a way to where your beneficiaries will not, you can't change them. The policyholder can't change them. Um, it's called an irrevocable beneficiary. Okay. And what that means is the policyholder, because 
Let me back up, y'all. So the policyholder has all the rights to the insurance policy. They are the owners of the insurance policy. They have the right to name beneficiaries. They have the right to change the amount of the policy. They have the right to um, cancel. cancel, terminate any type of living funds or benefits that that policy may have. They have the rights to those. Um, they also have the right to transfer um, some of those rights to someone else because you can use an insurance policy as collateral. Like maybe if you're an older person, you're 70 years old and you want a home loan for a certain amount, you can take out an insurance policy on yourself and transfer some of those rights to the lender. And so that in the event that you die before you're able to pay the lender your money, they get the insurance policy. Oh, so, so yeah, yeah. it's a lot that you can do with an insurance policy. It's very, very, um, it's a good thing to have. It has a lot of different benefits, not only just the fact that if you die, da 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 It's collateral. You can mm -hmm. use it in different ways. Your insurance policy through your job, you are not the policy owner. You don't have these rights to that insurance policy. The job policy. is the policy owner? The job, the company, the company is you the work policy for it. insurer. Okay. And you're the insurer. And I think that was one of the questions. They can mm -hmm. also basically change your beneficiaries. I don't know why they would do that, but they can because they're the policy owner. Um, they can say that because basically when you die and you have insurance through your job, the check goes to them. And then they give the check to who you the named the as your beneficiary. Okay. Mm. Okay. So. Okay. I have a question. We may have answered it. So, okay. So I have two different policies. Mm -hmm. One is my mom is the beneficiary. And I have one. My other one is split between both of my kids. So if I pass their minors, it will go to their guardian. It won't. Can I like? I guess I'm about to get a will to stipulate them not having until they're adults. Can that I do that? Because I wanted them to not have it because I don't want them to blow it. But I want them to have somebody for college or a wedding or a first car mm -hmm. in the event that I'm not here. So I guess I would need to get my motions together. Yeah. <laughs> I can I'm going to come to you because I was like. Oh, Okay, where are we okay. at with the questions? Okay. I think we're answering think we answer most of them. Mm -hmm. um, I had like 20 different questions on here. Y'all was thinking hard on these questions. If y'all have any questions, go ahead and type them in the comment area. Yeah, yeah I think we answered most of them. But I did have one thing I found out with my kids, because I'm like a stickler for life insurance. When they were first born, I had to wait until they were six months old. I figured it was a seeds thing, but I don't know the reason. They wouldn't let me insure them. Until they were six months with old. With like a real policy? With my job. They wouldn't let me insure them until they were six months old. So I didn't know if it was because of the SIDS risk or what. But they, as soon as they hit six months, I was done in that HR office, baby. <laughs> Sign us up. But yeah, I couldn't do it until they were both six months old. So I I don't know what the reason was behind it. I, my only okay. thing of I don't think of SIDS. What, what, um, what does it mean to be denied for life insurance? <laughs> Um, can you be denied for life insurance coverage? You definitely can be denied for life insurance coverage. Um, you could be too much of a risk that the company is not willing to take on. Um, if a company does deny you of life insurance, you can try another company. If you're unable to get insured with any company, you always have burial plans that you can get or anything like that. Or you can just start investing your money. Yeah. And that way... There are funds set aside for when you go to bury you and also to leave an estate for your children. So if you can't get insured through um, any type of company, you always have the option to invest. Um, okay. We already did what is a beneficiary. How do I pick one? It's pretty much whoever you want, right? It's whoever you want. Okay. Whoever you trust with it. Is there a minimum or maximum number of beneficiaries that I can have? No. Okay. However, you want to split the funds. All right. Uh, we already talked about you can change your beneficiaries. Okay. Wait, it is. I didn't go through that. Which one? So you can't change a beneficiary if they're revocable. If they're irrevocable, you can't change them. Mm -hmm. And so when I was applying for my insurance policy that I have on myself, um, it was asking if I wanted to make, because my brother in law is my beneficiary. Um, well, my husband first, but then my brother in law. Um, if I wanted to make him irrevocable. And I was like, I didn't know what that was. Mm -hmm. I hadn't completed the class yet. Mm -hmm. And I was like, they was like, irrevocable means you can't change anything to this policy without their permission. Oh, and I was God. like, why? Mm -hmm. Why would anybody right. do that? <laughs> right. 
So I had to think about this, y'all, because I it took me back. Mm-hmm. I was like, <laughs> I'm the one paying for it. Right. But that is a good thing. If you are a god parent and you're serious about this, and you you are a god parent of someone's child, you may want to be an irrevocable beneficiary because. If I'm saying in the event that mm-hmm. she dies and I'm going to take her babies, I'm going to need them funds to be right. a certain amount so that I can provide the bit. They may need therapy if she mm-hmm. passes too soon. <laughs> Everybody needs therapy, period, point blank. Yes. 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 But, you know, I, it's right. things that I need. Yeah. She may want her children to live a certain type of lifestyle mm-hmm. and I may already have a way that I raise children and she's clearly okay with that because she named me mm-hmm. as their godparent. Right. I'm going to need those funds. If she's the type that likes to take trips and say, okay, well, let me put my insurance policy down because I need to save these funds because I want to take a trip. But she don't tell me that if something happened to her, now I don't have the funds to that I was supposed children. to have mm-hmm. to take care of her children. I'm going to do it anyway. Right. But... Be, That's I'm when I would want to be an irrevocable <laughs> beneficiary sense. because they are going to be my responsibility financially. Da, 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 da. I can't that ask anybody for money for them because of that. So that would be an instance when I would want to be an irrevocable beneficiary. And I also would allow someone to be an irrevocable beneficiary. You can change stuff in the policy. You would just have to have the beneficiary write a letter saying that they give you permission to, to change, change that. Okay. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay. Um, scenario question. I'm married or in a long-term relationship, but my blank, my sister, my cousin, my bestie, whoever, is better with money management. Does my spouse have to be the person responsible for receiving or dispersing my policy? No. Whoever you name as your beneficiary is who you name. It okay. doesn't have to be your, your husband or your I mean, but if I if I have him if I have him as my beneficiary, but I want somebody else to actually manage manage it and plan my funeral and do all this because he don't do right with money. Does that make sense? So that would like I'm married, you my sister. Could you put that in a wheel, living wheel? You can put that in your wheel. Okay. I'm trying to see if you would also. That's when you would best want to set up a trust. Okay. Um, to tell the money what to do. Okay. And you can name the trust as your beneficiary. A beneficiary doesn't necessarily have to be a living person. Okay. Um, let's see. Because you still want your spouse or significant other to receive money mm. but you want it to be stipulations on that money that's when you get a trust or a will and tell the money what to do and when to do it and you can right. name that trust as the beneficiary you can also like give him 25 percent to blow and do what he wants to with it if that's what he can you know he he do you know him. him or her <laughs> Yeah. Whatever they're gonna do, mm-hmm. you can give them a portion to have free bands, mm-hmm. um, and then the other portion to be managed correctly. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I think I think what you just said answers the next three questions. They were scenario type deals. Mm-hmm. Um, if I pass while my children are minors, can I set up my policy or policy so that they can only access the payout at a certain age? And then the next one was. Uh, same scenario, if they're minors, can my policy be set up to where only my children have access to the payout? And then, how are my children or family supposed to know what the money is supposed to be used for? Funeral, uh, paying off debts, mm-hmm. goes to child one, child two. But I think that's just what you were talking about with the ma'am. Ma'am. Mm-hmm. What are you yeah. about? So basically, you can have multiple policies. You can have a smaller policy. Um that you want to be used just for a certain person like hey mama this for you or you can have a really large policy and just break that up into percentages so that they it can go to different people or something like that go to your trust go to your will um if you necessarily want your children to have a college fund you can stipulate that a portion of the money only be used for college I don't suggest that, but you so can't. 
Yeah, right. some. <laughs> they may just get or rich. You have allotted that money to go for them to go to college, and they go when college ain't for them. Right. So you just got that money sitting there. You can't do nothing with. Cause yeah. You legally tied with, it up. With Pride America, we teach families to first get in life insurance. Second, work on your retirement. Third, goes to education, because so many children. And nothing wrong with them not going to college. They may want to be a business owner. So here you go. Here's your business fund to start that right. instead of going to college. Um, but people send their kids to college first semester they back home. And you haven't even been getting ready for retirement. And you even blew $40,000 on your child to go <laughs> pledge. And which that's fine. <laughs> that's fine too. <laughs> if you want them to live the college lifestyle for a semester so they can pledge. and that, That's fine. It's an experience. Um, exactly. But you want to make sure that your retirement is set up first because nine times out of ten, children, even if they do go to college and, and graduate, they're coming back home to you mm-hmm. until they find a, a job. Way, their way. Yeah, and that's <laughs> fine too. It's totally fine. We got to start allowing our kids to be able I, to do this. I left at 27. Only because I, I was getting married. See, I don't see. Uh, hmm. So, um, my babies can stay, you know, they get on my nerves. Yeah. So, they better grab their water bill, but they can stay. If, <laughs> if I have a life insurance policy, do I need to also have a will? Like, is a will required or is it just recommended? It's not required, but it's, it's definitely highly, highly, highly recommended. Okay. A will is highly recommended even if you don't have a life insurance policy. So you can have a will without like, having... Money. Yeah. Yeah. People are fighting over clothes. Have a my yeah. sister already asked for my clothes and shoes. Yeah. I gotta write my wheel out. She get the clothes and the shoes. And I think she want my car. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can have Tommy. Some people anyway. just want stuff. Like they <laughs> want anyway, stuff. Child. You can, I can't drive. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Some people it just make them. <laughs> I'm like whatever. Girl, feel you can have it. Better. So. Just to have something that belongs to someone mm-hmm. they love. Just yeah. The smell. You know, that ain't the, the memory. Sometimes they want it just so somebody else can And some people dream. They'll fight over time. those assets. I've seen it. It's sad. Yeah. Especially and when you're fighting grieving. Over and fighting over assets. And they're fighting over DVDs so. and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Family. It can get real. That's my family. It can get real. <laughs> Okay, should I, and, and this is real, it gets real touchy, because now we're talking about, we went from insuring ourselves for our kids, mm-hmm. now it's insuring our kids. So, should I wait until my child or children are a certain age before I insure them? Uh, no, you shouldn't. Uh, most term policies and probably whole life policies have free riders, which means you can insure your children at no additional cost for something small, like maybe $10,000. And that is strictly something that would pay for you to bury them in the event that something does happen to your baby. You don't want to be thinking like, you're really not going to be, I don't know. You ain't going to be be thinking But you definitely don't want to have to (laughs) think about how you're going to put them in the ground. Right. And so, insure your babies um, with your policy. Put them on this rider. It's also a benefit because they can ride on your insurance until they're 25 maybe. And then they don't have to prove insure, um, insure, insurability. Insurability. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Which means they can just go get their own policy from there. Mm-hmm. And they don't have to. Because, okay, so say cause this is the black covered. community. Mm-hmm. If your child is born with sickle cell, you want to go ahead and put them on your policy because they will not. Or be able later. to, they will or not. Like cancer will probably be another one. Yeah. Diabetes. If your child has juvenile diabetes, you don't have to prove insurability with children. Put them on your policy. Mm. Get it, Get the writer that says they don't have to prove insurability when it's time for them to get their own policy. That way, they will always have life insurance because if they have anything like that, they will never be able to get their own policy. They're too big of a risk. Especially yeah. with, um, what's the first one I said? Sickle cell. Sickle, Sickle cell. Because my baby has a, it's, it's alpha-thalassemia trait. She doesn't have the disease she has to trait. But anyway, she's been Sickle on my th- alpha-thalassemia trait. Oh, okay. It's like a blood disorder. But she has the trait. Okay. I have the trait for sickle cell. Yeah, and so, I think Justin, think Justin, Justin has, has the trait. trait. So I got to talk to her, but she started dating. Like, look, you're going to get genetic testing. It's serious out here. Because yeah. why don't we need to get somebody else to the trait? Then and my baby got alphalasemia, alpha beta, yes. Mm-hmm. So it's serious. Ooh. We gotta talk about these things. Yeah, we do. 
Because yeah. um, I didn't find out I had to train until I was pregnant with my first child. And yeah. I was just you know, like, you for everything. I don't know if my husband, mm-hmm. well, he wasn't my husband. He was my baby daddy at the time. I pray to God <laughs> this man don't have this straight because mm-hmm. we definitely were not paying him to get tested. Yeah, genetic testing. It's too late. I'm pregnant. It's too late now. Late now. You can't do yeah. right now. So, but before I, you know, she when she started getting serious now. Um, oh, no, just no, no, the info. Was was good yeah, just when she get that when she gets older, I'm gonna let her know. Hey, you got this trait now. Oh. So when you mm-hmm. get serious, I'm gonna need you to go get tested with your partner. Like, ma'am, like a child can have. Like my husband has seizures. Uh-huh. And my nephew uh, of his younger sister, we just found out that he has them. Like, mm-hmm. he just started having them. And he, um, um, Nari is 11 now. Wow, that's a long and time. Yeah, he, so, that he's never had them in the past. Uh-huh. And he, they just found out that he, ha- that he was diagnosed to have seizures. Uh-huh. So, that would make sense to put them on, because you never know when disease will pop up. You don't right? know. You just yeah. don't. So I know a lot of people um, think it's um, bad luck mm-hmm. to get insurance on somebody too soon. That just you can't think about that. Like you have to do this. Um, it's it's more beneficial to have it than it is not to have it on your children. It's more beneficial to them. They'll be able to get insurance at a cheaper rate. If it's any type of illnesses that they have that would cause them not to be able to get insurance, they'll be able to be renewed with no problem. Um, what's another something else? Um, let me see. I think it was two more questions on here. Let me see what it was. My job pays for life insurance for me. Do I really need more? But I think the answer to that is yes. So if you have a policy with your job, it's always good to have your own policy because jobs are not guaranteed, but death is. So mm. that's a word right there. I'm right. sorry. What are yeah. what are bugging? So, <laughs> um, if you lose your job every year that you're at that job, you're getting older and older and older, and also you are going to have to pay more for a private insurance the older and older you get. Mm-hmm. So you don't want to lose your job at 40. Now you don't have life insurance, yeah. which you can convert that into a whole life policy or whatever. But you want to go ahead and have your own private policy. <laughs> Okay. As well, just in case that job don't work out or you switch jobs, mm-hmm. you know, you want to get insurance as early as you can to get it at the cheapest oh, rate. Sorry. And then the weird thing, I know a lot of times like when you switch jobs, it's like 30 days before you get, what if you die on day 25? Not going to be funny, but it can happen. No. You know what you I'm saying? Get, they'll pay it. So your previous you job will pay it or mm-hmm. the new one. Previous. Okay, so they, they so that insurance after. That, yeah, that insurance that you have at your job, life insurance policy, doesn't expire until 30 days after. So that's good, so you cover. Okay, you cover so still. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, the last question that was on here was, if I have a $100,000 life insurance policy, does that mean that my children will get $100,000 when I die? Or is, is it broken? Is it taxed? Is it broken down? So with the $100,000 term life insurance policy, when you die, your beneficiary will get $100,000 okay. if you die within that term. Um, with the whole life insurance policy, if you have $100,000 and you haven't took out any loans from the cash value or anything like that, you will get $100,000. If you've taken out any loans, they're going to take that loan amount out. And then you get the rest. Also with a term, so say you die before your um, your premium is due. Wait, hold on. Say you die and your premium was due and it's past the grace period and you have not paid that premium. You It will be subtracted from um, the policy. That premium amount. So if your yeah. premium was $40. Mm-hmm. The well, $40 from the $100,000. Okay, Correct. well, that's good. Or if you die and you had already paid your premium, they'll probably refund it. It, okay. depends. it depends on the type of policy you have. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. This is so much good. I even learned a lot. But, like, the main thing I see is that really saddens me is why you're grieving. You got to go for them and you're crying fish. Right. We ask people for money. This ain't cool. Like, we buy bundles, we buy Jordans, we buy rims. But we fry fish to bury you. That, that's not cool. It's not cool. priorities. <laughs> we we insure our cell phones. We mm-hmm. insure DVD players when we buy them from Walmart. 
You pay that extra four dollars. We insure everything, <laughs> but we're not insuring ourselves or our children or our family and our loved ones. You need to do that. And if I don't have a baby daddy, I got a husband. Hey. But if I had a baby daddy, I would insure him as well. <laughs> and I would definitely be the beneficiary. So you don't need permission from him or her. This is just mommy. This is mommy. But this is mommy. yeah, you don't need <laughs> you don't need his permission. That's your children's father. Put so a policy on. You don't have to do the. You don't um, have to do the stream of life. Just how much you want. When you go. And you don't have to do the. Uh, you know, some of those policies require you to do the exams and all of that. A medical exam. It depends. Well, with my company, if you get more than three hundred thousand dollars, you do have to do an exam. You have mm -hmm. to get. In, but if you do under three hundred thousand. Then you don't. It's just a look at your medical records, look at the application, and then the underwriter will approve you or not. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how long do you usually take to know if you're approved for life insurance since you can get denied for life insurance? It just depends on how long it takes them to go through your medical records um, and your, um, they do credit reports, um, background reports. Just to see, like, try to get an idea of your, the behavior that you're in, hobbies and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Skydiving, if you want to, if they see that you've been skydiving, they're not going to insure you. Um, oh, man, yeah, I want to skydive, so I need to wait until I get my own right. policy. Get your own okay, policy. Then I'm gonna go skydive. Skydive. Okay, then I'm going to You might want to wait to go to the doctor <laughs> in case you get diagnosed with cancer. Wait mm -hmm. on that. Get your insurance first and then go check your process. You know, check your birth. Seriously, and all it's serious because, because it'll be a pre after you've been and it'll be a pre existing yeah. condition. Like, yeah. it's it's serious. It's really so serious. if I go if I go on on January one and get my policy and then on February twelfth I'm diagnosed with breast cancer, is it would it still be considered pre existing if we mm -mm. okay just that no. medical risk. it can be so it starts my, from when you found out when the diagnosis is That's right. my mom see. actually was sick she died from pancreatic cancer she was sick she wasn't feeling well i don't know if she felt it in her spirit but she upped her policy mm -hmm. probably a week before she was diagnosed with cancer God is good. and they was like you <laughs> did what you supposed to do she upped her policy like a week before she was diagnosed with cancer mm -hmm. so, so she was covered so it she was they cancer. couldn't do anything you yeah. can do it can be an hour before as <laughs> long as you make sure that line up Some it's not existing because you didn't have any knowledge of it mm -hmm. okay. so mm -hmm. just so much, so um, much information i'm trying to think stuff. of any other questions um Okay, so I know, I know we all watch Lifetime. <laughs> I know we all watch our own channel. We all watch We. So you know you have the 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 murder for you know killing for the insurance money, and you you have some the uh, You're making the policies and committing suicide and things like that. Like how does all of that play into? I guess getting your disbursement. Suicide um, with life insurance and murder with life insurance. Well, murder, they're going to pay whoever they're supposed to pay. Now, if you end up getting locked up, I mean, I don't know how that's going to work. Mm -hmm. But with suicide, after you've had your policy in effect for two years, if someone commits suicide, then you still get paid. Okay, good. Okay. But you got to have that policy for two years. Mm-hmm. Now, if you have a policy, but you don't have anybody named as a beneficiary, who gets the money? Like, who gets your, your life insurance after you're dead and gone? Um, I guess it would be put to probate, and some somebody would have to claim it, and the courts would have to decide who gets it. So, that's not smart. <laughs> <laughs> I always say you beneficiary update. Thanks for enlightening us on life insurance. Very informative. Thank you, Jay Queen. I'm trying to think. If y'all have any questions, if y'all can think of anything, I'm I'm trying to think. Um, any scenarios, <laughs> any experiences with life insurance, <laughs> any questions? Um, uh, is there any other information you can think of to offer? 
that we haven't mm -hmm. already covered. You want to try to, when you're getting life insurance, you want to try to make sure that you're at your best, when I say, so that you can get the cheapest rate. You want to do it as early as you can. The younger you are, the cheaper it is. Um, they do take into account BMI, uh, what my company does. Um, just anything. You want to try to get that stuff under control, get your blood pressure under control, get that stuff under control so you can get the best rate. You don't want to pay enough obscene amount for it but even if you do you um shop around um shop around i'm with primerica so i can help you get insured from term life insurance i can help you get a will as well as an attorney on retainer legal protection for just 26 dollars a month that comes with the attorney on retainer retainer and the will so i can help you with that um you want to make sure that you list good beneficiaries. You want to talk to these people beforehand um, and let them know what you expect from them and that you're listing them. If you don't have anyone, you can... Beneficiaries don't have to be related to you. Um, I know some people may have best friends, like my best friend is on here right now. And if she wanted my babies, I would definitely <laughs> give them to her before some people in my family. Call, call. <laughs> uh, Just put that out. Also, if your beneficiary or the guardian of your children were single when you named them, then they got married, you want to revisit that. Mm -hmm. You want to keep revisiting who your beneficiary or guardian of your children are, where they are in their life, and make sure that it's still good. It's a good understanding. Mm -hmm. um, this is a conversation that you want to have with all your family so that they know. Mm -hmm. So that, say, I did name my best friend, my sister and them not coming at my best friend crazy right. once something happens. It's they already they understood. You tricked her, you convinced her. You yeah, so you want to make it, so it just be a smooth process. If we talk about this more before it happens, it makes the process way easier. Because, like, when my mom died, she didn't... I remember as a kid, we went to so many funerals. I'm just like kind of numb. It's just something normal to me. Um, I actually see the beauty in it um, as opposed to the grief. I know it is sad. You still grieve. Everybody grieves different. But it eases the process when it's so also with your children. You know how some people say, I got to find a babysitter so I can take my kids to the funeral. I think it's kind of good to expose them early because it is a fact of life. I take my, well, my son bad, but I still take him. <laughs> but I take my daughter and I explain it to her. If you're religious, then you know that the only way that you can get to heaven is if you're dead. So, yeah. you know, um, yeah. well, you know, the I mean, and all that, it but it, it shouldn't be something that you're scared to talk about or anything like that. You should talk about it just like it's a birthday. It's something good. It helps with grief. Like the fact that I'm open with my daughter, because she took my mom's death really hard. Um, but the fact that we were open with the whole process that she is going to be dying soon, spend as much time as you want with her, because it was cancer, so she kind of got that mm -hmm. extra time. It wasn't sudden. Mm -hmm. But just have these conversations with your kids so that they also know what to do when they're adults, because it's just second nature. It's common knowledge to them. Mm -hmm. It's common sense to them what to do, what's a beneficiary, how it works, how this process works, and what's the importance of life insurance. And the more you talk about it, the easier it is. Um, so if it's, not, if it's not a funeral that was a traumatic event like violence, I would suggest to let your kids go. If it's somebody that just died from old age or something mm -hmm. like that, I would suggest that you let them go and let them be around that because it's normal, it's a normal part of life. As long as it wasn't violent, you know, someone got shot and killed, that's traumatic for a child. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a natural death is more a way to get them familiar with it. That's good. Um, I went every, I was tired of them. I was yeah. like, Mama, why are your friends dying? <laughs> <laughs> I legit asked her that one time. I want you to better to friends. Mama, why are your friends dying? She was like, well, just wait and see when you get out. Y'all yeah, gonna be dying faster than us. we hear about it now. Like, and it's true. Oh my God, they yeah. got We are. Yeah, it's true. The older you get, the more you're dying faster and younger. Yes. And it's, 
it's scary. It's, it's scary. Very, very scary. Also, if you have, I was just gonna say this. I feel like it's my people on this group. If you have little cousins or nieces and nephews that's living a fast life, mm -hmm. before they get in trouble. Mm -hmm. Get some insurance on them. Good. Because once you go to jail, some insurance people will also deny you for that. Wow. They will insure you. For your lifestyle. For your lifestyle. Insurance? You well, are a So, mm -hmm. but if you see them acting wild and crazy, go ahead and get that policy on them or whatever. Tell their mama to go and get a policy on them before mm -hmm. they get in trouble. Because if they, but in the, if they go to jail, they're going to drop that policy anyway. But I'm just, I was just Really? Like, like, for a long, like, what do you mean? Like, any amount of time? Like, if I go for one day because my tags is bad or, like, a sentence? I'm just serious. Like, prison. how? Oh, prison. prison. I know prison for sure. Prison. It may be different from different okay, insurance can, but So you can't start a policy on somebody in prison, and you can't continue a policy for somebody in prison. Oh, oh that's good information. Gosh, well, my mom was... I guess because it's high risk. It I mean, is. Yeah. It happen in there. It's, it's high risk. Survival of the fist. Mm -hmm. yeah. So once you come out, you may have to pay more. But it's just the more risk you have, the more the policy may be. But it's still possible. I mean, you get life insurance for a term. For why you are being a responsible person and building your own nest egg. Mm -hmm. Just in case something happens while you're in the process, in the working years. Mm -hmm. of building your own next nest egg mm -hmm. you have life insurance once that term of 35 years that's the max you know that's the max of most mm -hmm. of them that's how long mine is you should have been investing and setting mm -hmm. yourself up to where you now can still have a, a transfer of generational wealth without life insurance mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. and then you can get a whole life insurance policy if you want to pay an arm and a leg just to add to that nest egg or whatever. Mm -hmm. okay. So, yeah. And what, um, now I know you, you ran down, uh, started to run down the list of the services that you provide. So, I know we do, you, you do the life insurance, you do the, the will, and you can do the attorney on retainer mm -hmm. with the will, and it's $26. $26 a month for the duration of have along and keep yeah okay yeah and with that you can use that attorney for anything you can use them for a track of a ticket you can use them for criminal you can use them for child what is the child course family court yeah mm -hmm. um sure. anything a car sure. wreck you have 300 billable hours with that 26 dollars and then yeah, if you go nice. over that 300 it, you'll get a discount rate Three hundred nice. a month, or a year. Three hundred a year. Three hundred mm -hmm. billable hours a year. That's yes. That's a nice so thing. you know when people are like I'm gonna call my attorney, you really will have an attorney to call. That's so nice. yeah. Then um I to help mommy save money. Um I have a phone number I'll post on this live. You can call and see if you can get cheaper homeowners insurance or cheaper car insurance. Okay. Primary, can we do a lot so I can let y'all talk to someone about investing. If, because I haven't done the securities part yet, but we can get you set up with investing. Um, what else do we have? Home security. We don't do home security. We don't do the auto. We just have partners with different companies that do that. Okay. 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 As well as the, you know, the wheel and stuff like that. We partner with the one. Okay. And how can, I know we'll, we'll put all the contact information in the comments, but how can you be reached? Um, my phone number is 501-563-2477. My name is Marianne Opar. You can reach me out to me on my personal Facebook page. I also have a business Facebook page. And it's just, it's Marianne Opar as well. But you do at sign Marion S. Opar. Mm -hmm. And that's my business page. And I'll be more than happy to sit down with you and your family and go over this. And more in depth. Help you get secure with your life policy or anything like that i also do real estate but i'm talking about life insurance tonight We're gonna get back to real estate, so that's coming up we got a whole other series coming up for y'all so in a minute but i gotta work out resources for that so. and i got a lot of different friends too so if anybody me with any questions i'm gonna point you to somebody okay it works for me Appreciate um all right mommies if y'all don't have any other questions comments concerns what have you um I think we're past seven, aren't we? Yeah. We're going we gonna to let y'all go, but um, 
it's never too early. I mean, we don't want to wait till it's too late. You can't wait till it's too late, but it's never too early to get a life insurance policy for yourself, your children, your spouse, your baby daddy, anybody. Um, Miss Marion O'Para, if she, if you, if you would like more information, if you would like to go ahead and get your policy started, get information on it, get your will, auto, homeowners insurance. Connections to all the other stuff she did. That's a lot, girl. She got a whole lot going on. I'm tired. I'm trying to Just get listening it. to the resume, honey. Right. But it's a whole one stop shop. If you need it, we're gonna put all the contact information in the um in the comments. And we will see you mommies next week. Bye. Love you. Thank you. So that would be fitting. Y'all know the song.